Today we're in the Mirage 2000C on the usage of the Magic IR Missile and the Super 530. So the Magic is this guy here, we can carry up to four of them. It is a short range IR guided missile, similar to the Sidewinder. This guy here is the Super 530. This is a semi-active radar homing missile, otherwise known as a Fox 1 type missile, while this guy is known as a Fox 2 type missile we can carry up to two 530s. First, we'll look at the Magic. It can be used in two ways, either with radar assistance or without. The reason for not using radar assistance is if A, we had a problem with our radar, or B, if we wanted to maintain radar silence to keep ourselves less visible. So first, we should look at the controls that we're gonna be using today, as that's part of the change, and there's quite a few we're gonna use. So to fire, we're gonna push and hold weapons fire to fire either of the types of missiles. To select the magic for use, we'll be pressing CNM magic. To deselect the magic to allow us to use other weapons like the 530, we'll be pressing CNM neutral, i.e. PCA select. Once we are CNM neutral and we want to select the Super 530, I've got this set up, stores to select, and this will allow us to select our 530. For when it comes to using our radar, quite a few buttons to do. So to slave the magic to our radar lock, we've got magic slave here. If we want to acquire a radar track through ACM close range, then we will now use weapons system command forward to toggle between ball sight and vertical scan. We've also got aft to toggle between the two horizontal ACM scan modes and depress to unlock a radar target and or to cancel the ACM radar scan modes. If we want to acquire a radar track from our BVR attack radar, then we can slew the cursor around with these guys down here, TDC left, down, up, and right and to acquire a BVR radar track we'll press STT slash TWS toggle and I'll talk through it as we go. So first for using the magic without a radar lock we're going to ensure that our master arm is turned on. I'm going to quickly check that my radar is turned off for this example and it is, it is a standby. I'm then going to select the magic with the button that we looked at earlier. Now I've got the magic selected you can see that we now have our magic selected here we've got the left magic and the right magic available. Depending on the, where the target is to the left or right, it will depend whether we have the left or the right magic to fire. Now the IR sensor on this missile is on a gimbal pivot and it can point in different directions. It's currently locked to our bore site, which is this cross here. And we'll have to maneuver our aircraft so that a hostile heat source comes near to our bore site cross here, at which it will gain an IR contrast lock on that aircraft. When that happens, it will uncage itself or unlock itself. And the gimbal sensor on that missile there will then follow the hostile around within gimbal limits. If it gets out of gimbal limits, it will lose the lock and recage or relock to bore site. Once we have a lock on the hostile, we will see because we'll have a circle following the hostile and a tone, we'll press and hold the trigger to fire the weapon. Okay, maneuver behind him. It's always best to attack behind if possible for a missile like this to gain the IR track. We move him over our cross and you can see that we've got the tone and the circles. The first thing is to see what happens if we move out of gimbal limits. See, we lose the, we lose the IR contrast track. Get him back. That's it. Press and hold. Weapon away. Now the one thing to note is that because we don't have radar assistance, we've got no way of, and you can see it's chosen the left hand one and now selected the right because we don't have radar assistance we don't have any terms of any way of ranging so ranging is purely by the skill of the pilot in terms of the range of the missile it's about two miles if you're shooting behind a fast moving target and up to about eight miles if you're attacking a fast moving frontal target head on so next we're going to use radar assistance so the radar is going to go on ping okay let's go and find another target all right i see one i'm going to press Weapon system command forward. I've acquired a bore sight radar track on this hostile now. We've still got the magic selected, we haven't deselected it. And what we do have now is extra information. We've got the hostile there in his radar track box. We've got ranging now, so we can see that the hostile is 8.4 miles away on what we think is a cold aspect. We've got our max there, so that's the maximum range of the missile on this aspect. That is the no escape range of the missile there, and that is the minimum range of the missile there. Ideally, we want to have this guy here, the actual range, below the minimum escape range, the no escape range, and above the minimum range before we fire. We've got our ASE circle here and our lead minute, small lead box here. The way we want to do this is to 
maneuver our aircraft so that our ASE circle here encompasses the small lead box here and that will ensure that we get the correct lead required for an optimal shot once we are within range. But we're not quite there yet. We can't throw at the moment because we haven't got the tone. That means the side, uh, the, sorry, the magic isn't getting at the contrast lock at the moment that it needs. There are two ways we can do this. One, once we have the track like this, we can move the guy near to the ball site again here to acquire the track the same way as we did last time. In fact, why don't we try and do that? You can see like that. And I'm just going to pop out of limits now on purpose to lose that track, that IR contrast track and up again. Now the other way that we can do it is we can slave the gimbal sensor on the magic there to our current radar lock and the way we do that is to press the magic slave button that we looked at earlier. We're going to press that now and that has automatically slaved that gimbal sensor there to where our radar lock is and we need to fire the magic, we need that tone and we need that circle to fire. So next we need to get within range, we're currently seven miles out so we're just going to skip time forward until we're in range. Okay we're getting close to be able to fire so we now need to move our ASE circle to our lead box which is all the way out here. This shows how much lead we've got to put on, nearly within range. I'm going to wait till we're within no escape range. Press and hold the trigger. You see once we get the smaller circle within the ASE circle we're within no escape and almost assured of a hit. Okay, that's all for the magic, so now we want to show the Fox one. You can see we've lost the radar track, we're now not in ACM track mode, and we're now in a BVR search mode. So we can use our attack radar here. So to fire the Super 530, in fact, why don't we select it first of all? The first thing we want to do is CNM neutral. The next thing we want to do is to select the 530. We can either click on that tab there, or we can press the button that we looked at earlier, which I'm going to do now and we've got the 530 selected as you can see. To use this missile we need to gain a radar track, either TWS or STT, track or scan or single target track. We can achieve that by either using the special modes or the ACM modes as I like to call them that we'd use to do that track for the magic or we can use our BVR attack radar and we'll probably use both. So first of all let's because we've cancelled our special modes, we are now back to BVR mode. We can use our attack radar. We've got a full half an hour video on this, so I'm just going to use it. I'm not going to show you how to use it as such. I'm going to head towards some targets. I know there's some out here somewhere. I'm going to move my TDC, and I'm just going to choose that one there. I'm going to press lock. We now have a TWS lock. Out of interest, the Super 530 needs an STT lock rather than a track while scan lock to fire. We currently have a track while scan lock. We can tell that because it says PID, which is the French syntax for that. But we don't have to worry. It will do that automatically. When, if, when we press and fire this missile, it will automatically change to an STT lock. So we can essentially fire in a track while scan lock. I hope that makes sense. Let's quickly look at the symbology and it's pretty much the same as the magic while using the radar lock. We've got the radar track box there, we've got the right missile, the left missile there and it will choose the correct left or right based on the current aspect and whatnot of the aircraft here. Uh, we've got the 530 selected there, we've got the ASC aiming circle there, we've got the lead box there. Again to fire we'll get the ASC circle to encompass the lead box to fire to get optimal lead. We've got our ranging here, he is currently 11 miles from us. That is our R max. That is our R uh, no escape or R lethal. That is our R minimum. Ideally, we want to get this guy here below R no escape and above R minimum to fire. This here is our closure rate in knots. So we're currently closing at each other at 127 knots. 10 miles. Always a good idea when you're doing uh, missile fighting like this for long range, zoom in so you can see all the information really easy. We're now within R max, so we can fire now if we want but we want to wait until we're in our no escape. Now, I was hoping at this point we would actually lose lock. Now, what you'll find with the Mirage, due to the way that the Mirage radar just is, is that quite often you lose lock. It's very frustrating if you're used to using more powerful radars like the F-15 and the F-18 or whatnot, and you will lose lock a lot. So I'm going to simulate a loss of lock by uh, undesignating, uh, cancelling the lock as we saw before. And that will usually happen when the target turns cold or turns sideways. It just so happens this is a very big target. It's very hard to lose a lock on such a big target. In this case, I would then go to Weapon System Command Forward or whatever my selected ACM mode type would be. And we've Im immediately got the lock back again. Let's try that, but from a slightly more difficult so point over here. We've lost lock again. Weapon System Command Forward. We've got our bore sight method of tracking of uh, acquisition here. We've got now going to get the hostile within 
the circle, and we've picked him up again. So I was just explaining that because quite often you guys will go out, you'll pick up the Mirage, you'll go out there and try your BVR acquisition, you'll get the lock, and then you'll find all of a sudden that, that lock will just disappear. And it's very frustrating if you don't understand why. It's to do with the way the frequencies work with um, the radar in this aircraft, and this can also happen once you've fired the missile. In fact, it's especially prevalent when you fire the missile. You can lose the lock, and once that happens, the missile will die. If that's the case, reacquire the lock, fire again, or switch to your Mavericks as we looked uh, sorry, Magics. So let's carry on. Now, to get an optimal shot now, we've got to get plenty of lead. And we may have actually left it too late now. Let's see if we can pull that lead. I get the ASE circle all the way over here at the lead box. Let's see if we can get it before we get within mirror range. Fire, press and hold. Might work, might not. Missiles don't like being fired too close. Pew, we got him. So that showed how we can acquire a radar lock via BVR means, beyond visual range or within visual range, i.e. ACM, and how we can lose the lock and then re reacquire the lock again. Other than that, it's actually a very good missile. It's not particularly long range, but it's quite a hard missile to be relatively maneuverable. I hope that helps and see you later.